Under basic conditions, any carbohydrate can transform into a different isomer of that same carbohydrate, and this reaction is known as the isomerization reaction. Previously, we discussed the isomerization of D-glucose into D-mannose. Now, let's discuss the isomerization of D-glucose into D-fructose. So let's begin with the cyclic version, the version that predominates at equilibrium. So remember, any carbohydrate, in particularly our glucose molecule, exists in equilibrium between the cyclic and our open chain version. So we begin with the alpha D-glucopyranose. We could have also used the beta D-glucopyranose. The end result would be exactly the same. So in the first step of this reaction, we basically want to use a water molecule to protonate this oxygen. So in the first three steps, our goal is to transform the cyclic version of glucose into the open straight chain counterpart version. So in the first step, we basically take our a uh, water molecule which basically acts to protonate this oxygen on our cyclic molecule. So in step number one we have the protonation step of our oxygen. So this acts as our Lewis base grabbing this H, taking away these two electrons, placing them onto this oxygen. And so we place, we form the following protonated version of this molecule here. We have an H here. We have our, the rest of the molecule, which basically looks something like this. We have the H, the OH, we have the OH, we have the H here. We have our primary alcohol group. We have our H pointing up, the OH here points down, the OH here points up and the H here points down and we have a positive charge on our protonated oxygen. So in the next step, because of the protonation of this oxygen, we basically weaken this bond and so in step number two, this bond breaks off and the two electrons go onto this oxygen here. So in the next step, we have the formation of the open straight chain hydrocarbon where we basically no longer have the cyclic version of our molecule. So we form this molecule that looks like this. So we have our, methyl, um, our primary alcohol group here. We have the rest of the molecule, the H, the OH points down, the OH points up, the H points down, OH points down, H points up, our OH points here and our H is here. Now, when this takes place, we place a positive charge here and it can also be delocalized onto this oxygen here. So we have resonance stabilization. And in the final third step, we form our straight chain version, the open straight chain version of D-glucose. So in the next step, we have, so in this step, we form a hydroxide, and now that hydroxide basically grabs away this H atom here. <clears throat> so this goes on for, uh, grabs this H atom, and the bond that exists between this oxygen, so let's redraw this so that we can see that bond, this bond here can now form a pi bond between this oxygen and this carbon, forming our double bond. So we form the following molecule that basically is no longer cyclic. So this is the open straight chain carbohydrate version of our D-glucose. So we have the H goes up, the, o, um, the H goes down, OH goes up, H goes up, OH goes down. Here we have our OH goes down and H goes up. And here we have our double bond between the carbon oxygen and our H. So this is basically our D-glucose. And this is our open and not cyclic. So this is a cyclic version. Okay, so 
at equilibrium, this cyclic version will predominate over this less stable open one. But as long as we have a little bit of this left over at equilibrium, this will basically undergo the next several reactions that we're going to discuss to produce our defructose. So in the next step, we have in our mixture, because we are under basic conditions, we have our base. Let's suppose our base is hydroxide. So if we have our hydroxide that acts as our base, what can our hydroxide do? Well, basically the hydroxide will act as our base and our alpha hydrogen attached to the alpha carbon position, this carbon here, because this is our aldehyde, the carbonyl group, so this is the alpha carbon, and this is the alpha H atom. So basically this will act as the base grabbing our uh, alpha H atom to produce this molecule that basically will be resonance stabilized. So we have an open carboanion that is formed. We have a negative charge that will be delocalized among the carbon and our oxygen atom. So we have a, our two electrons here, our OH here. We have our, um, the carbon here. We have the H and our double bond here. But notice we're going to have resonance stabilization and this negative charge can also be delocalized onto this oxygen. So um, if these two electrons basically form a pi bond here, that will displace these two electrons and the pi bond onto the oxygen. And so we form the second resonance stabilized structure that looks something like this. So we have the OH group here as well. So we have the OH, we have our primary alcohol group, we have our H pointing up, OH pointing down, we have the OH pointing up, H pointing down, here we have our uh, OH, uh, now we have the pi bond formed here, we have the carbon, the H, and our OH, I'm sorry, the O, not the OH. And so we have a negative charge on this oxygen here, and so this will be our resonance stabilized form. Now, in the next step, we can either go on to produce our D mannose, as we discussed in the previous lecture, we can go back to, re, uh, to reproduce the initial starting material, our D glucose, or we can go on to produce our D fructose, and that's what we're going to focus on in this lecture. So in the next step, we can basically take a water molecule and the water molecule can protonate this oxygen here. So if we have a water molecule in close proximity to this oxygen, the oxygen will take away an H atom from this uh, water molecule, producing our hydroxide, as well as the final molecule, our enol. So this molecule, by the way, is our enolate and our enol is the molecule that I'm about to draw. Actually, it's a double enol because we have two of these hydroxyl groups. OH here, double bond, OH here. We have our primary alcohol group. We have our H pointing down, the OH pointing up here. Okay, so this is our double eno. So let's label it as the double eno. Now, in the next step, since we're under basic conditions, what the base can do is, um, yeah, so what the base can do is it, is it can take off this H atom here. So let's redraw it in the following way. So we have um, a base. that now takes off this H atom and that forms a pi bond here, placing these two electrons onto this carbon here. And so once again, we form a carboanion intermediate. So we have the oxygen and H, we have the primary alcohol group, we have our the rest of our molecule. 
So we have our double bond between the oxygen here. We have the OH that points up, the H points down, the OH points down, H points up. And then we have the carbon here. This carbon contains our two electrons, an H atom, as well as the OH. Now in the next step, when we, when we go through this step, we form our water molecule. And now the water molecule can basically act to give away one of its H atoms to this carbon that contains the two electrons. So this can take place. And we basically form the hydroxide base at the end, as well as our molecule in which we replace the, key, uh, the aldehyde group with a ketone. So we formed the defructose. So the defructose will look something like this. We have the OH. We have the CH2OH primary alcohol group. Here we have our H, our OH. Here we have our double bond between the oxygen carbon. Here we have the OH pointing to the top, the H pointing to the bottom. And here we have our CH2OH. So in this final molecule is the open chain carbohydrate version of defructose. So basically that is similar to this molecule, except this is our D-glucose. Now this D-fructose will then go on to form the cyclic version of our fructose molecule. We're not going to look at how to form our cyclic version. It's basically the same exact as this, except we go in reverse. So this was the isomerization reaction of D-glucose into D-fructose. Now it's important to notice that D-fructose is an aldohexose. The D-fructose or the D-glucose is the aldohexose. The D-fructose is our uh, ketohexose. So we basically replace the aldehyde group in our glucose with the ketone group in our fructose. And these two molecules are isomers with respect to one another because they both contain the same exact molecular formula.